Welcome back, everybody. So, the executive mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay, Babanga, has written to Arts and Culture Minister Natiem Tetwa, calling for the reversal of the new name Tebeha given to Port Elizabeth. Banga says while he's not opposed to name changes in the process of reflecting on the country's history, the new names should portray an inclusive society. Banga says the chosen name for Port Elizabeth has no connection to the people of the metro. Nelson Mandela Bay Metro Executive Mayor Naba Banga joins us now to discuss this. Mayor, good to have you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, uh, Lian, and good morning to your viewers. So let's let's start with the basics. I mean, let's let's talk about the the new name change, Tebeha. Fr from your understanding, what does it mean? What does it represent? L let's begin the interview there. I, I must say, Lian, that I'm a Tosa man, and uh, the, the the name Tebeha have no meaning in Isikosa. Uh, what we're being told is that this name as origin it's in koi language mm. it derives from the koi language and our view is that if it is in koi language therefore it must be written in koi it can't be written in Tosa because it loses its meaning yeah. what that means is that what the government is trying to do is to restore uh, languages and restore dignity to those languages in which where um, uh, we derive an opportunity uh, to be utilized in this country, in including in how they were written. Mm, mm. Therefore, writing a coy word in Isitosa distort the whole reasoning of uh, uh, restoring the dignity of the Khoisan people. This name, if they want to name a Khoisan uh, name, Port Elizabeth, they're supposed to use the Khoisan language, and I think that's fair. Yeah. The second issue we are raising as a city is that out of the four names they have named, the airport, uh, Port Elizabeth in a coin name, Udnit in a coin name, and also another part of Udnit, of Udnit in a coin name. They've named the airport Terman a koi, they've named Port Elizabeth a koi, they've named Udnit a koi, they've named um, one, one part, a, 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 a call, which is Karika and Kamesh. Our question is that, is this restoration? And restoration of and addressing um, 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 the, the, the erosion, the, the erosion of another uh, 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 language must not replace um, uh, another language. In this case, the closer names are being put aside then they are affirming the coiny. The majority of people in this part of town are closer speaking uh, people. And replacing all the names of the towns in this town with coinsen, it's injustice, and I think so. And therefore, the city are raising that. Okay. The third issue, the issue of past of consultation, is that the municipality under the leadership of uh, Dr. Denny Jordan long expressed its views that it will prefer this city to be named Nelson Mandela, a, a Mandela city. And the council took a decision and pro submitted a proposal. And there are many other names that unify the people of the city. And I think the minister has chosen to take only these single names, which has no meaning in Tosa, which is not written properly in the Khoisa, which is used by one small township. It's like saying uh, Johannesburg is Soweto, and that's unfair. Therefore, that's why we are raising this issue, that we want a conversation with the minister, firstly a political conversation, to say how do we deal with this situation? Because if people do not want to own this name, they will never use it. We've seen it before. All right. Let's, let's, let's quiz you now. Um, do you not think that some of your explanations are tribalist in a way? Is that you yourself are, are being very divisive. I mean, if we want to be all-encompassing, your debate around the fact that this is more Khoisan than it is Tosa is a problem. I, is that really the heart of your debate? No, it's not tribalist, it's facts. If you use a name, Gredecha, and you say this name, in, in, in its, its natural 
uh, 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 evolution. It's a coiny. Write it in code. There's nothing wrong with that, about that. Because restoration, it's also about redressing how the names were written wrong. For instance, my surname is Banga. Many people in the past wrote my surname as Banga. In restoration, you have to put an age. An example, another example, Umtata was written as Umtata. That has been changed. Now we've put an age in Umtata because it's a restoration of a Tosa language. Therefore, what this process is all about is bringing back dignity to languages. Mm. Choosing Trebecha as an original name in a Khoi and San language and use it in Tosa is incorrect. It's not restoration. Mm. They were supposed to use a Khoi written language in this case. Mm. And also, we must understand that South Africa is a diverse nation. If we talk about restoration, we have to restore the injustice called to the Khoi and San, but we must not replace the injustice uh, that is being done now to the Khosa language. Mm. So, I mean, we, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's an interesting conversation we're having. It certainly is. And, uh, and, I, and I look forward to getting some of the views from the people that do live in the Eastern Cape and to see if, if the argument that you're giving is, is how they're feeling at this time. Because I think there is more of, there's more to it. And also, I think for the Khoisan, you know, a conversation like this could could very much so speak to how their beliefs are that they don't have a place in South Africa. And with some of the words that you've been saying and some of the, the, the you know, the, the reasons that you've given to opposing the name is, is almost basically making their feelings valid, is that they don't have a place. And by putting through a name like this, you know, perhaps this is the inclusivity that we talk to. Do, do you not feel that? I know you're not against name changes, but... But specifically going in at the Khoisan community, what, why, why would this be your stance? In our co co court of arms, the, the government one, there is a, 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 a Khoi language used, written in Khoi language. That's an injustice, both to the Khois and the Khoisans, to say the origin, the, the origin of this name is Khoi and write it in Tosa. That's not restoration of languages. You, they were supposed to have written Kadeha in the Khoi language. Therefore, the expression could have been more louder in terms of restoration. Now, they, they say this word and this name is Khoi, they write it in Tosa. And it distorts now, again, another language, which is injustice to a Tosa language. Therefore, the mistake here is technical, in which they're supposed to have addressed it. Grebecha, they are saying it's a Khoi name in terms of origin. They must write it in Khoi if they want Port Elizabeth to be called. Mm. They must not use a Tosa names that do not have the meaning in Tosa and say this is a Tosa name but origin, originating from, 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 from Khoi language. Mm. That's the point that we are trying to drive here. Yeah. The second point we're trying to drive is that the majority of people in the city have submitted a number of names. That's why I've written to the minister to give us a, a feedback to say, we believe that the process was not as inclusive as, as, as we would have wanted as a city. To an extent, the city as an institution have expressed an opinion, not me. They need your done then express council an opinion to say this city must be named under Mandela City, mm. meaning that many people embraces the values of Nelson Mandela and they identify. Remember the names we give to cities. People must be proud about those names. Okay. In this case, a minority of the people is not is, is proud of this name, but the majority is not. All right. So let's let's move a, a little bit away from from that because we i think we've heard you loud and, and clear so you've given us your explanation as to why and i do see from social media that you do have support but there are others that are also saying that they feel that your reasoning is not right on this one so it, it's quite interesting to see this conversation move forward but the process of name changes started 
before your time as mayor. In fact, from what I'm reading is that this particular name was already put forward in 2016, and, and I think by um, uh, Christian Martin. It's, it's one of the three men who successfully campaigned, and they, in fact, are, um, you know, a part of the, the, the Khoisan community. So they, they started this. There were other names, as you said. But this was before you were mayor. What is your understanding on whether there was a consultation process and public participation? And, and how were the names actually decided on? That's the point, um, is, is that there was public consultation, but it was not extensive. Um, uh, many institutions, many organizations have expressed, in this case, um, their submissions. We are so confused on how uh, 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 many of the names who have meaning and who can unify uh, the people of the city lost presence in the whole process. And then we had only this name that does not necessarily bring us together, but divides us, one. Spelled wrongly, uh, with no meaning in the language that is written on, and it made it. Uh, it shows that there was a gap from the people who were making the research to understand exactly the context and the meaning of restoration. And many organizations, the ANC in the region, the Democratic Alliance in the region, the UDM in the region, only the EFF embraces this name in this region. It means there's something wrong about the broader consultation in this issue, because in the main, these are biggest organizations that have the capacity to mobilize people and get into these things. Business in the region is also concerned about this name. And many churches are very concerned about this name. Therefore, whose name is this? Mm. Is this Minister Mtetwa's name? It can't be, because if it is Minister Mtetwa's name, it's not going to sit in the streets of our people for them to own it and use it. You will have a name given to you that you do not use, because you do not associate yourself with that name. We don't want that. Mm. People embrace Nelson Mandela municipality because they were part and parcel when the municipality was naming Nelson Mandela municipality. They love it yeah. because they, they participated in this one. We feel disenchanted because they, a consultation that was engaged here, I think it was a desktop consultation. Mm -hmm. And if we mean that we are the government of the people by the people, we must make sure that we do everything into our power to have an intensive communication with our people to make sure that they are involved in these processes because they are sentimental and they can divide communities. Yeah. And this happened in a very difficult time in our city when 42% of our people have lost jobs. And this have just erased us in the map of uh, tourism destinations. Mm -hmm. And we have to struggle for a long time to make sure that we familiarize the international world with this name. The timing of this even renaming uh, was not proper. Yeah. Therefore, I'm saying to you, uh, we are so concerned about a number of things. We're not fighting. We're opening up options. We are going to engage with the minister, firstly, politically. If we are not winning, we'll opt even to a, a legal action yeah. to make sure that fairness is done, that people are involved. Is there, still, Jordan, is there still an opportunity? Are you still... Um, I, I, I mean, I have been reading about the fact that there, that there, there may still be a route for you to actually go and for people um, in, in the area to, to completely, because I believe that there is a petition that's been the, the, signed the, by close to 50,000 people. So is this still open for discussion? I mean, once it's being gazetted, is that not the end of the process? The, the, N, the MEC have confirmed uh, that uh, we still have 10 days to respond to this name. I'm consulting with my legal team and also consulting uh, with uh, people uh, involved in, in names and uh, in, in languages uh, to guide us in this, because it must be a research uh, argument and a research uh, uh, response. Yeah. We don't take this thing lightly. Do, do, you uh, have because a, do you have a recommendation? I mean, what would you ideally love to see the name change to? Our, many people have proposed Palo, Many people have proposed a number of Khakhabe, uh, a number of Tosakins. Uh, Many people have uh, proposed 
Sipo Ashe, who died from the same airport. Many people have proposed Mandela City, Raymond Chaba, Kovindeki. Those are open names and people uh, that they embraced a number of names. This is not the issue about the non-availability of names, but this is the issue about this kind of name that is not structured properly, one in language, two that divides people. The name does not bring us together. The usability of the name and the name itself has just been a joke because there must be also an ability to use it including for the people who come to you to be able to use and identify with the name. This Mr. name is Mr. Bunga, I, ha I have to come in. I mean, it may not, you know, it may not be your first choice, but, you know, this is the first choice of a lot of people. And I think that a lot of what you have said may ring true for the Kosa community, the Kosa community. However, to, to insult the Khoi people by talking about the fact that it's a joke and talking about, you know, the way that we're talking, I'm, I'm not sure this is the way that you, you, you should be addressing this topic. I mean, especially as a leader coming into a metro that has been saddled with political challenges and de de divisiveness. I mean, your coming to office was very tumultuous. Uh, one minute you were voted in, then the following day your election was nullified. Um, you know, th these are the kind of things that you're coming in with and do you think that this is the tone that you should be taking we're not taking away from how you feel about the name but perhaps this divisiveness is not necessarily what um, your area needs in order to come together as one the problem with many the problem with many South Africans is that when you engage in controversial issues people want you to say what the people want you to say. You must say the things that are right. What is right about this issue is that the government claims that the name that is being used, its origin is Koi. And the issue I'm raising, this, this name is not written properly in Koi. Therefore, restoring the Koi language, it's not true. They're not doing that. They've written this name in Tosa, claiming that this name comes from Koi. Therefore, that's not restoration of the Koi and the Sen language. This name in Tosa is a distortion. Once they are claiming that it's written in Tosa, there's no meaning of it in Tosa. And that's the truth. And we must confront the truth as such. The mm. unfortunate part of me is that I don't say what people want me to say. I say the truth and I say what is right. And I think that's the point. It has nothing to do with the position. It, what, what this has to do is the injustice for both the Khoi and the Tosa people. Therefore, I'm addressing that uh, technicality in which restoration of language is also about these technicalities that needs to be addressed. Mm. I've just used my language as an example. My yeah, surname yeah. is Ampanga with an H. Many people in distorting my language, they've used B-A instead of using an H and an A. Therefore, in restoring my, my surname, is that I had to put an H to make it bang, not yeah. bang. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a good tweet that speaks to what you're saying, and I, and I bring Figo into this conversation, at Figo Bones, saying, Mayak Ngaba Banga has, uh, says Tebecha is Koi, says his surname is Banga, not Banga. Uh, so now we must draw goats for Koi spelling, is what they say. Is Banga written in English or Tosa? It's a futile argument. And that's what some people are saying about this. Um, the, the issue, um, uh, Lien, about languages is that the intention of uh, restoring languages is also restoring languages in a, very, in a correct format of how languages should be written. That's the most important thing. All right. I will give an example about Ibai. Ibai. Ipai is not a Tosa name, it's, it's it derived from an English name. Therefore, you can't use it as a Tosa. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important name to Tosa. Therefore, if you restore a language, you must use its original meaning and its in, in original uh, way of writing languages. Mm -hmm. That's what the restoration is all about. Instead, we'll be writing here Fanagalo and saying it's our languages. Fanagalo, it's not Zulu. Fanagalo, it's not Sutu. Fanagalo, it's Fanagalo. Therefore, if you want to write in the order, in the Sitosa, you're not going to in the order. 
you are going to say in the water and you write it in Tosa or in Zulu. Therefore, right. its original meaning must start there. All right. Mayor, thanks for the conversation. Uh, there have been so many responses. We're going to try and read a couple of them. We get your argument. We get your standpoint. And uh, keep us updated with how this goes. I don't think you'll need to do that. I think everybody will keep us updated. Uh, it is a widely reported on thing. So within 30 days, you say you've got time to comment on this. There are new recommendations for names and you want your voice heard. So thanks for talking to us. Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, Executive Mayor Nababanga, talking to us about the current contestation following the renaming of Port Elizabeth to Tabacha. And uh, we'll get you the tweets and your views after this. Stay tuned.